Hey guys, alright. Did you guys have a good... Oh, it wasn't even the weekend. It's not even the weekend yet. I'm asking you if you guys have a good weekend. Anyways. <laughs> Thank you guys for all of your um, comments from yesterday's video. That was just weird. That was a weird situation. I'm glad it's over with and I'm just... I'm, screw that. I'm, I'm done with that. So today... I kind of wanted to talk about the god in traditional witchcraft and why all of the neo-pagan revivalists want to see the god in a love and light and kind and caring and comforting um, aspect of nature and just what exactly is wrong with this whole scenario of the holly and the oak kings. So it's pretty interesting information. Again, so... Now, this is probably, this is, um, the king of the wild wood. And this is, to me, this makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Because it's time for him to come to an end. This energy. So, as the equinox or whatever, yeah, the, the equinox, right? Autumn equinox? Yes, the equinox. That's going to open up and usher in different energies for us to perceive and to actually feel. So, that's, you know, something different. Slightly less scary, quote, 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 scary aspect of the god. So, now this is probably the aspect of the god that will be uh, familiar to most people, um, that of the horned or antlered god of nature. However, in traditional craft, he is looked upon in a very different way to modern pagan practice. He's not gentle, loving, father figure. He is not the comforting protector of his wild family. He's not the mild defender of the rights of new man. So this is the aspect of the god that is most feared, and rightly so. So, yeah, that's, uh, raw. The raw, wild side of nature. The devastation, and that's part of him. So, as mentioned above, he is the render, the destroyer, the ripper, and the raper. He sends mortal terror into those that come in his way, and can bestow madness and chaos upon those that are not careful in their dealings with him. So, that's kind of why it just, yeah... For New Agers to come in and do this and try to work with this aspect of the god, it, it, yeah, and then they get scared, and then, poof, you know, it's, you know, we have a bad reputation. It's okay. Now, this is the aspect of the god that the Inquisitors of the past love to scare their flocks with, uh, the very devil of the Sabbath himself. Now, he goes here to say, I do not mean to imply that, you know, there is anything negative or even evil about this aspect purely that he embodies the pure unrefined driving force of the masculine side of nature and we have to have that we have got to have that or we won't you know we won't exist if we didn't have that masculine side of nature we wouldn't exist obviously if we didn't have mosquitoes we wouldn't even exist very odd now which is truly red in tooth and claw and elicits a comparative response in us when we encounter him. And this is who I encountered when I was little. When I was, um, oh, probably about mm, 10, 10, 11 years old. Not, uh, 10, about 10, right? Usually before I think we moved into this house 21 years ago. Um, so I was probably about 9 or 10. And this is when I encountered Pan, or the Horned God. And it terrified me. I was terrified because I seen what looked like a beast baffle me uh, in my window and I couldn't sleep in my bedroom anymore it was it literally was haunted I would hear all kinds of stuff and well the haunting it just kind of followed me so whatever but it was ter it was terrifying and I was not prepared for it but now I am so I see what happened and I see why I was terrified it was preparing me for what was to come a precursor of you know advancement learning more knowledge and you know an intimate connection with uh, our God you know in traditional craft so, this is an aspect that we have uh, mostly forgotten in our modern, comfortable, sanitized world. And this is where it, I mean, yeah, that's very true, too. It's very, very true. And I don't, I don't want to, you know, um, not remember that aspect. Because that's the aspect that I work with the most. The most is that. The, yeah, so, but he is still a defender in ways. But not the ways that you would think. So, now here, this next sentence is, it's, geared more towards the neo-pagan and uh, the keeping a positive mindset and the universe and nature always has your back. No, it doesn't at all. Life is harsh and cruel. It does not conform to our concepts of what should and shouldn't be. So, yeah. Um, it is raw and painful and that as it should be. 
So if it was all sweetness and light, which most modern practitioners seem to want, what would we learn from that? Where would uh, the challenge, the impetus, impetuous and urge to go forward and achieve against all odds? We wouldn't be learning. That's why we need this kind of unbalance. Especially for, you know, one day, you know, the autumn equinox or the autumnal equinox. That is, and it, no, it's not Maboon, Ma Mabon. That's not as ridiculous as a Welsh god. So, essentially, he says, what I am saying here is that the king of the wildwood is the challenging side of nature. The force that impels us to become more than we currently are. So, I mean, it's that driving force, that tyrannical father figure that I am actually enduring. I've endured this for my entire, for 21 years, uh, the tyrannical king of the wild wood, that aspect, big time. And where I live, it's called in wood. So, well, the Indians, you know, there was a, like a peace treaty, and uh, I supposedly there was a peace treaty, which I highly doubt, because men are evil. Evil, yeah, big time evil in man. Um, evidently, you know, the, the Cherokee, Native American Indians here, they evidently, and the Potawatomi, they evidently, you know, you know, made some kind of pact with them, you know, to, they would protect us, Chief Menominee would pre protect us, if, uh, you know, they could, you know, cultivate on our land and build houses and different things like that. So, uh, yeah, they were probably driven out, um, just like the witch was here. So, anyways, now, as an aspect of the natural world, the Wildwood King can be seen as having himself different aspects, and these are often described as the Summer and Winter Kings, or the Oak and Holly Kings. Now, this is a total misinterpretation, very wrong. Now, modern neo-pagan practice tends to place the reigns of these two kings as from winter solstice to summer solstice, solstice, the oak king, and from summer solstice to winter solstice, the holly king. And this is missing the point in confusing terms entirely. It's, it's weird. Tradition, I mean, modern paganism, modernism and revitalism and, you know, reconstructionism has really ruined a lot. So, but traditional craft takes its inspiration from what actually happens in the natural world rather than what some people write in books. Very true. Now, if you look around uh, you in the wild, um, what do these two tree or aspects come into and go out of season? So, the holly is admittedly an evergreen plant, so would fit any time of the year. So we must look at the oak for answers. Now, if you look at this tree, you will find most that it's totally bare and devoid of leaves um, and life at the winter solstice, and will become be for months to come. So how can it naturally be observing by observing the natural world take over at its this, at this time? The oak comes into um, new life and new leaf and life around the end of April and the beginning of May. So, around the time of the festival of Rhythmus, or Beltane. Now, at the opposite end of the year, it drops its leaves and star, and starts its winter uh, dormancy around the end of October and the beginning of November. And that's what's coming up around the, um, the time of the festival of Hallowmas, or All Hallows, or Samhain. So, the actual reigns of the Oak and Holly Kings are um, from Rudmus to Hallows, which is the Oak, and from Hallows to Rudmus, which is Holly. So, this also correlates with their alternative names of Summer and Winter Kings. So, the attributions of their reigns to Winter and Summer Solstices are actually refers to the solar aspects of the God, which is very a very different thing altogether and not an aspect of the King of the Wild Wood. So the gods and the goddesses are separate in traditional witchcraft. They're not all one. So, I mean, but the equinoxes and solstices are the times of great change on the inner levels. New tides of energy are released at this time, and the inner awareness changes, the inner currents. So this is not immediately reflected um, on the outer levels, and hence refers to a different aspect of deity, uh, be that male or female. Now, during the summer months, the Oak King holds sway. This is the male power concerned with um, impregnation, growth, and ripening, and not just on the physical level. So that's within us. That's pretty amazing. I, pretty, I, I really like that. I love this aspect of the god. It's Baphomet in its purest, raw, natural, primal form, and it's amazing and beautiful. 
Now, during this period, we look to the god for the energies of expansion and learning. So it is an active period when crafters would be out around it, about in the wild. Literally, you guys see videos of what I do outside. It's honoring, you know, different aspects of the gods. That's why that some of those videos, like the cleansing, um, I don't put any information on any of those. So those are some pretty important videos to me. Um, where'd I go? So yeah, yeah, it isn't, yeah, we would be out and about in the wild and studying the workings of life in their own environment. So, that being said, what do you guys see in your own environment? The holly and the oak. Take a look at an oak tree, and then take a look at the holly tree. Do they, do they correlate, do they line up with what you feel is, you know, the god? Anything like that? No? Yeah. It's very confusing, and modern neo-paganism has completely, especially with the whole Gerald Gardner jumping into the mix, you know, from the 1950s, you know, which he did join a traditional witchcraft coven in England. So, but he also took, you know, um, all of these secrets that he was given by the spirits, and he published them, and he mixed them up into just a, a hodgepodge of just mush. So, that's, yeah, that's why I was, you know, saying the other day on I don't care for Gerald Gardner. I would never join any kind of a coven that has anything to do with Gardner. I don't care for that. I don't like the neo-pagan. I do not like revival reconstructionism at all. I like my craft to be old. It's just, it feels good. It makes you feel at home. It, it just sparks something in me personally that's just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to be in the moment, to actually just breathe and be in the moment outside and feel the wind, see the fire going, see what it's burning, how it's burning, how the smoke rises, you know, the, the feel of the ground and the snakes and, you know, the serpentine energy in the land. It's a beautiful, beautiful time. And yeah, Bukadu uh, is coming, so this is Bukagwitter, his reign is kind of ending now into, um, up to Samhain kind of, so we have Bukagwitter still because it's so beautiful and it's green out and that serpentine energy, that sprawl in the natural landscape of your own place, your own geographical light location is literally just alive with energy and it's insanely incredible. So, alright guys, that is just my take and my little, you know, little what, commentary on that. So, the king of the wildwood, amazing and terrifying all in one, so yes. And that just confirms to me again an, a little epiphany, which I would do right now if it, for a traditional witch with the cord. Somebody mentioned cord magic, that's what I would do right now, is tie a cord or a knot with that knowledge in it and that power in it of what I understand now about calling on, you know, the horn god, um, the god of the wild wood when I was small, little, littler, younger, <laughs> to now, to the knowledge, to what it pre oh, was a precursor to to more learning and to more knowledge and to all of that and a better connection with the God and it's just incredible. So, but alright guys, um, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, it was great to see you guys in chat yesterday, I loved it. Um, the the question about the trans, um, if anybody has a problem with you, have them come see me. Um, because you're amazing in every shape, way, and form and what you feel like on the inside, you're, you're good. You do what you need to do. Um, I don't fully understand it, um, I'm because that's not how I feel, but I can totally, you know, um, I will do anything and everything to try to support you and help you, and, you know, be there for you and talk with you, so email me, r-y-a-n-j-e-s-p-i-c-h at gmail.com. It's all below, so if you see this video, I can't remember who you were, and I really want to because I really want to have a conversation with you because you're just an amazing human being. And I don't see stuff like this. I don't see color. I don't see race. I don't see religion. I don't see creed. I don't see any of that crap. All I see is a person. I see a human being that is in, you know, in need of, you know, maybe, you know, just some advice or, you know, just some, some love and some help. And, you know, I'll I'd gladly do that for anybody on here. So, I mean, my, my phone number, public phone number, and my, or my phone number is public on my website. My, um, at Ryan Occult Specialist. Facebook.com slash Ryan Occult Specialist. So, I mean, you guys can text me. Um, but yeah, text me first, but don't call. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a, I will, you know, I'll talk to you, but just text me first and let me know who it is. Anyways, um, I gotta clean, so. I love you guys very much. Please stay healthy and safe and all that good stuff. All my love, all the way from 
Venus. I got to see her rise this morning, the morning star, him, I'm sorry, all the way back down. And it was a beautiful, beautiful. But alright guys, I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. And thank you guys for your comments and amazing, amazing energy. So, alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow.